to be a part of this multi-campus cyber infrastructure event today here in Rutgers. And I agree, living dangerously is fun, Chuck, so thanks for inviting me to be a part of this today. I wanted to, uh, I'll be getting my slides up here, speaking of living dangerously. Great, thank you. So, I'd be invited to join you this morning to give you a little bit of a background, a very quick now background of Internet 2 and its resources for research and education. For those of you who may not be familiar with it, Internet 2 is the research and education network in the United States today. It was formed in about 1997 by a, an organization called UK, the University Corporation for Advanced Internet Development. And UK essentially was a group of research universities that got together and said, this commodity internet thing, this, this internet is no longer um, what we need in research and academia. It doesn't support the kind of collaboration and research in the labs that we require. So they developed this next generation networking organization. Today, Internet 2 is comprised of 207 universities across the United States, working in close collaboration with government agencies and industry partners, much like the creation of the original Internet. Internet 2 is also a venue that brings together uh, academics and scientists from around the world. And if you take a look here, the mission of Internet 2 to develop and deploy that next generation network and the applications that run over that network, accelerating the creation of tomorrow's internet. The goal is enable that next generation of applications, recreate the leading edge research and education capability of the network infrastructure. And then, and this is important, to transfer that technology to the commodity production internet that we all know and love. So Internet 2 today essentially has four focus areas. Networks, services, middleware, and applications. And I'm going to leave some of these discussions to, to presenters for later on in the session this morning. So if I could just say for those of you who may be new to middleware, it's a layer of software between the application and the network. Obviously, networks and the infrastructures are critical to this community. Services such as multicast, and then obviously the applications that run over these networks. And all four of these focus areas are impacted by security, by end-to-end -end performance, and they work together to enable and motivate the challenges and developments within the community. So here's the, here's the landscape. 207 universities, and obviously Rutgers is one of five here in New Jersey that are university members in the international community. I wanted to mention this. In about 2001, Internet 2 essentially opened its doors through something called the K20 Initiative. And this initiative made access to these advanced networks available not just to the R1 research community, but also to K12s, libraries, museums, zoos. The K20 Initiative has conducted three surveys, and most recently finished the third. And you see today, over 35,000 K-12 schools connected to Internet 2. I hope that number surprises some of the faculty and the administrators in the audiences here. A lot of universities don't realize the kind of reach that Internet 2 has across all levels of education today. For those of you who are uh, mathematicians in the audience, obviously 46,000 doesn't quite add up to the column there, but this is taking into account other categories that weren't included in the original survey. Performing arts centers, library systems, places like that that are now connected to the network and community. In addition to the U.S. land, 
CNN team also is an international community. By working with 47 other high-performance research and education networks around the world, Internet2 truly is a global interconnected community in advanced research and development. Well, what's Magpie and how do we fit in? Magpie is a regional aggregation point for Internet2 located in Philadelphia at the University of Pennsylvania. We are a gigapop, a gigabit point of presence. And we have a two and a half gigabit connection to Abilene, which is the high performance backbone that makes up Internet today. And our mission is essentially to introduce new technology, to collaboratively develop new applications working with our members, and to make access to these technologies scalable and sustainable. Our current members here, we connect about 216 organizations. And I show this because I want to emphasize to the Rutgers faculty here today that you're part of a regional high performance network as well. The Magpie High Performance Research and Education Network in the tri-state region is available to you in terms of collaboration and applications of the <coughs> We work with the New Jersey State Research and Education Network called NJNet in providing internet to for the entire state of New Jersey. Through NJHNet and Rutgers, there's 155 megabit connection dedicated for Rutgers into Magnify and into Allen. Well, why Internet 2? You've heard a little bit about the background. You know that Internet 2 is a consortium of universities across the United States. You know that Abilene is the U.S. backbone that interconnects with 47 other hyperfocus networks worldwide. You know the K-20 initiative is connecting thousands of K-12 libraries, museums, and zoos. And you know that in the tri-state area you get that connectivity and application support through Magpie. Well, who cares? What's it all about? To us at Magpie and to many within the Internet 2 community, the applications and collaborations that make up this community are where it really gets exciting. And you're seeing a lot of that in action today. Internet 2 provides the ability for real-time access to remote resources, large-scale multi-site computation and data mining, and we'll hear lots of examples about applications involving these areas today. Interactive collaboration like we're doing right now with 11 sites connected three different technologies all over this network. Rich multimedia and digital library, shared virtual reality, and any combination thereof. Well, Internet 2 is also for changing teaching and learning in the classroom. This slide, which was actually created by Carmody Dev at Stanford University, gives you a sense of that. Essentially, the classroom is different today. Faculty here in the audience and in our remote audiences, you know that. Students and faculty are taking in information and incorporating multiple channels of information in real time. Synchronous and asynchronous communication, rich multimedia and data sets that are available in the classroom. Some examples. The Research Channel is an example of a digital library that folks are using in the classroom today. The National Science Digital Library is another example of a rich multimedia library that's available. NSF funded over 500 collections as part of this library for use by faculty and educators across the county. Lehigh University, Bethlehem, PA, has a tiny electron microscope that they make available to the students and teachers in the classroom who can access this equipment over the network and be able to evaluate and look at slide samples that they send in through this um, remote interface and software that is developed. Under sea oceanography, Project Neptune is an example of this out in the Pacific Northwest in a collaboration with the University of Washington that makes available a regional cable network under sea that involves sensors and computation and those that make evaluation of the undersea landscape in a simulated and real way, observable and studyable by these academics uh, in this collaboration. 
the U.S. Japan Interactive Dance Event for the performing arts folks in the in the audiences here. This was an example from a community college in Pennsylvania that used a technology that's not being used here today, the EBS, that enables a rich interactive experience at three magnets per second each way. This is a collaboration between Tokyo and Philadelphia that involved dance critics who were able to watch this rehearsal in real time at a very high quality, high resolution plan and interact with the choreographer, the dancers, and the technicians who made this possible. Well, obviously there are a lot of applications and examples that I can talk about. I'm already getting the signal that it's time to wrap up, and I know we're going to hear lots more from some of our other speakers today. So, how do you get involved? If you're a Rutgers faculty member and you're fairly new to this stuff, what can you do to learn more? Where's your support network? Well, within MAGPI, we've created a K-20 support network that aims to, to help you, to help use these resources for research and education. There's a K-20 virtual user group that meets every other month and we welcome all connected institutions to be a part of this where we bring in the little speakers and different topics of interest. We have discipline-specific virtual forums. In fact, this Thursday, we're having the Arts and Humanities virtual forum and we invite all users, not just connected institutions, interested in Arts and Humanities to get involved in this session. We're also doing health sciences, the social sciences, um, and so get involved in these discipline-specific discussions across K-20. We have tried K database that's being developed in the national uh, database out of the Internet to initiate of my K-20. A portal, a newsletter, we're offering training, so video conference training, professional development, how to integrate Internet 2 into the curriculum. Internet 2 obviously is a great resource as well. From a national perspective, there are lots of working groups, Bob, special interest groups that I encourage you to get involved in. I'm particularly fond of the teaching and learning special interest group, and I would hope that many of you may be uh, interested in joining that. I'm the co-chair of this group along with Marty Siegel at Indiana University, and there's a lot there that I think we would love to have your uh, participation and input on. So get to stay involved. Join one of these groups. Talk to your campus IT folks. They're wonderful resources from a technology perspective and a community perspective on where you can learn more. Seek out colleagues. Seek out students to be champions and to work with you in using this technology in valuable and meaningful ways in the classroom for your research. Join some of the MAGPI virtual boards that are available. Host or attend an Internet 2 event like the one we're doing today. It's a great way to learn more and see the technology in action. Participate in some national large-scale virtual events. Many conference, which is an all-virtual H323 or IT-based video event that happens every year. The Keystone Conference, which is for educators, same kind of format. Big conference, but it's lots of people. Get involved and use the technology to see what others are doing. Finally, send me feedback, updates, inquiries, and of course, discussion here today. And at that, I think I want to just really encourage you to get involved because this is truly a community. And we need your challenges, we need your input, and we need your energy to help make the promise and the vision of Internet 2 and cyber infrastructure a reality. With that, I think I'd like to open up the question for are we on a time crunch and each of us for our next speaker? We're good? Okay. I know that was a bit of a world. Are so. there any questions from the audience? <coughs> Jennifer, do you want to put in a word about the first part of the UMD NJ about Lambda Rail and its uh, interface that you will hear about in Lambda, Lambda Rail and come? Sure. So I mentioned that Abilene today is the Internet 2 backbone in the U.S. It's a 10 gigabit backbone. And National Lambda Rail is another initiative being developed uh, simultaneously that's working in conjunction with Internet 2. There are some discussions right now on the table about a merger between Internet 2 and National Lambda Rail. So folks may be hearing quite a bit about that. 
And certainly, um, National Lambda Rail is for the research community. It's uh, uh, quite extensive in terms of, uh, if Abilene is a 10 gigabit backbone, National Lambda Rail is uh, 40 10 gigabit lambdas and uses a technology called DWDM, dense wave division multiplex, to make that technology possible. So you'll be hearing a lot more about National Lambda Rail uh, probably from some of our speakers today and certainly in uh, news from the internet to uh, coming forward. So thanks. Are there any questions from the other two sites? The other side? <laughs> 